Tim, well, the mayhem is in full swing for you. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, it's flat out all of a sudden. Yeah, it is, it is. Earlier than we wanted. Yeah, it but, does seem uh, earlier this year, doesn't it? It does, yeah, it does. But with with the dry weather, people are holding back drilling a little bit, so we're still, still got a lot of muck to spread. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, what are you doing? We're agricultural contractors, uh, T&JT Helm. Um, I suppose we do our special. We specialise in muck spreading, foraging, obviously, and beet harvesting. You and all John Deere tractors. Yeah, yeah. We got five. I don't know. Does that count? Does that class as a fleet? I'm not sure. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I should think so. Yeah, we got five of them. Um, you got a few lads helping you out today. A few lads on the blue yeah. machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I never liked New Orleans, but I do quite like the look of them. The new ones. So. Yeah, especially you're two to go for the green. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk foragers then. You're a chrome man. Yeah. Now and you have yeah. been since since um, 2014. It's when... a bit of a story to how you got to chrome. <laughs> there is a bit of a story. Do you want the long story or the short story? <laughs> go on, go for it. <laughs> um, basically, we were John Deere forager when I first started um, in 2008. As far as I know, they've been John. They were John Deere foragers for wow, donkey's years. Is that the expression? Is that yeah. the term? <laughs> yeah. um, but unfortunately, no fault of, of our local John Deere dealer. We were looking to change when John Deere were just releasing the eight the eight series, but you couldn't get one, and they wouldn't tell they wouldn't tell you when when you could get one. So we decided to change. Um, didn't really want the 700, a Chrome 700. Didn't really like it. Thought it was a bit old and a bit, a bit basic technology. I'm sure that they're good machines. They're reliable, but yeah. it just wasn't for us. Um, I suppose luckily I was quite involved in the deal as such. Yeah. Um, and we pretty much bought a class 950 that was really the only thing available. We tried a New Orleans, uh, tried a John Deere, but like I said, you could only get a 7480, which we didn't really right, want. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we pretty much, he pretty much signed for a class. Anyway, he called me down one afternoon to the office, and I went down there and he opened up the Profi, <laughs> and in the middle of the Profi, on two page, two page spread, was this new Chrome, and I think the title was something like the caption was Big X, uh, Baby X, Big Appetite. <laughs> and it was a picture of this new generation machine, which was a five, was it a 480 and a 580 at the time? Um, right. Uh, within the next few days, Palaces of Hereford, which were our chrome dealer, which we hadn't really had nothing to do with come out and, and tried the deal again on a 700 and, and John said look we don't want a 700. Opened up the, the Profi and said that's what we want, we want one of them. And they said oh you can't have it, it's not available. It's uh, They've only released the pictures of it and such, it's not available to buy. Right. Yeah. So we sort of went back to class. Um, and then Palaces approached again I think maybe a week later said there was a chance of a 580 as a pre-production machine for the 2014 season so we took it um, I think there was only one other in the country down Guy Machine Somerset maybe somewhere down there right yeah yeah and you fell in love <laughs> wow something like that yeah yeah I suppose I did <laughs> makes me sound a bit sad, sad <laughs> um, yeah so we had it it was supposed to come for for the start of the grass, but it was it was late. I think Crone and Class were both waiting for the same Mercedes engine, right, MTU yeah. engine. So I had, to, I had to start the grass season with a 700 anyway. <laughs> um, but it did, yeah, it, it turned up and it was a nice machine. And that was the machine that you had last time I came yeah, out to see you? Yeah, Crone. Which is where you're on, the, uh, you're on the big crops there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. day. Uh, oh, yeah, that's when we had the, um, we had the one of Ben's band of trailers out. Yeah. Try, try that out. Yeah. Nice so, trailer. Heavy trailer. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then you swapped to, for this one. 
Yeah, 2014 we had it and we swapped it in 2021 for this one, which is the 630. Uh, we should have probably swapped it the year before, but you couldn't get the new facelift model. There wasn't one about, so we waited. Um, and then we had this this 630 with the slightly wider wider feed pack feed system. A um, bit more power, a few little different bits, but yeah, yeah. nice machine. I don't know if I quite like it like the 580, but perhaps <laughs> that was just because it was... I haven't quite decided it. Yeah, it's, it's all right, it's nice, it's nice. And how much maize are you sort of chopping through uh, the season? Oh, that's a bit of trade secret, that is. <laughs> It varies quite a lot because we chop, <laughs> we chop a bit that other people drill, and we drill a bit that other people chop, sort of thing. So right, yeah. we'd be looking at. So what is it coming to the end of September? Yeah, now? we've what, done. How much have you done? We've probably done about five fifty, six hundred. So we're not, we're not quite halfway. No, I won't do the maths. <laughs> 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 Um, but it varies. I mean, some years I'm, I've only chopped a thousand acres, and some years we're getting up to eighteen hundred acres. It's and the business itself. There's been a bit of a change for you guys. Yeah, lately. there's been a big change. Um, sad, yeah, big change really. It start start of the year January. We all come back after Christmas, um, and unfortunately or tragically, John, who owns the business, um, passed away in a in a farming accident. Um, so yeah, we sort of had to make a decision where where we cut, we either carried on or I suppose we gave up. But we ain't gonna give up. Can't so give up. Decision, yeah. Right? So we, uh, I suppose, I'm running it as such. But John's yes. wife and daughter are behind the scenes doing the bookwork, which yes. makes it a bit yeah. easier. Um, yeah, and. and is it eight months, nine months on? We're still here. We've, we've been busy. We've not lost any work. All the customers have been really good. Picked up a few new ones. So, yeah, a good good bunch of lads all, good, all out with us out. Yeah. I think when you see it in a real life situation like yourself here, it just goes to show, doesn't it? You know, yeah, it does. I mean, how important it is. Yeah, I went. Farm safety. And yeah, that. no, I, I started. The biz, or I suppose John T and J T Helm or John Helm used to come and do our May silage in at home, so I knew of the business for a long time. I went to Hartbury College for two years, and I went on. I come here on work placement uh, for six weeks. Went back and finished the course, and then come back and went full time here. Um, you see, you see farm accidents all the time online, and you and you think that's not going to happen. But, but it does. It does. It certainly and does. we're not. We're not. We've all done it a long time. Uh, we were all. We, it's just an accident, a freak accident, Absolutely, and it just yeah. happens. Blink of an eye, and it's it's, it's happened. Um, I think there is. There seems to be a massive push in agriculture on on farm safety, which is probably long overdue. Um, everything else has all got it. So why shouldn't, why shouldn't agriculture? At the end, sometimes at the end of the day, you've just got to use your your common sense, yeah. your common sense, and keep yourself out of danger. And even if it takes you an extra five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the biggest thing. It's just rushing, just yeah. rushing. We do long hours. I mean, we're, we're all doing long hours. Sometimes you've just got to take a minute and um, think about what you're doing. I suppose the biggest the biggest learning curve for me was just. Um, just the money, the money tied up in it all the time with the diesel. Could have done without the yeah. diesel going to 110 or 112 or whatever. I was going to say that didn't help. No, it didn't help the situation. Um, so there was a lot for you to take on there. All yeah, the a lot. Yeah, a lot. Um, yeah, you don't realise the like the money tied up in it. It's just money all the time going out. Tires, yeah. <laughs> fuel, wages. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can get through. Probably some some weeks about 12,000 litres of diesel. We run a Homer T4 beet harvester. Good machine, not nice machine. 2016 that is. Um, we do we do a lot of beet, uh, quite a lot of beet harvesting. Um, 
every day really when the season starts. We've been out already, we've done some five or six acres just to keep a day. So even, that, even that started already? Yeah. Everything yeah. seems so early this year, yeah. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, but people always say to my missus, oh, it must be all right in the winter, they're quiet. <laughs> But we're, we're busier in the winter than we are in the summer. You. <laughs> beat our beat our hamster comes out and we're uh, yeah we're non-stop. Yeah, <laughs> what machine have you got on the pit? We got a JCB 419. Um, we were a 414. We upgraded to a 418 in 2015, which was which transformed the job really. It was a hell of an improvement, but it just wasn't reliable. Just right. wasn't very reliable. We had we had issues with the transmission and something, so we got rid of that and swapped it in for a 419 in 2019, and it's been a good machine, really good machine. So down where we are today, is this for what's this maze going for? This maze is going for um, beef. I guess it's beef right. farming unit. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not dairy or it's not AD, so it'd be your old-fashioned beef unit. So the majority of you are chopping. AD or? No, no, we do ma mainly dairy and beef. We do get involved with AD where, where you come to up at um, no, 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 no. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I quite like going to dairy farms, dairy farms and beef farms. You, you're there for a day, you sheep the pit if you have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you go and uh, everyone's happy. Yeah, no, this uh, machine's good. Chrome machine, good maneuverability is really good on it. Um, I like the layout of it. I think this this screen is slightly too big. The older the 580 had a smaller screen and it just fitted there nicely. Yeah. Um, whereas this one seems to be rub the other rubs the pillar. Anything else you change on it? Or? Um, not really. No, I quite like it. It's. it's it's got your auto PTO, the hydraulic pins, so you don't have to get off to do them, to take the header on and off. Uh, your wishbone, independent wishbone suspension. You can lift the rear axle up and down. If you want for whole crop, you can pitch the header over if it's gone flat. Things like that. Yeah. So, going back to the, the 580, I mean, uh, a lot of people, uh, you see it all on, was it Chopper Pilots on Facebook and things like right, that? Yeah. I'm sure you've looked on there. <laughs> about the backup from Crone and things like that, but I can't fault it, to be honest. It's been, over the years, it's been really good. So you would never go back? Um, I wouldn't say never. <laughs> There's still never, a chance. You can never say never, never. <laughs> but I like the machine, I like I like the joystick, I don't I don't really like the push ones. Like, there is a technical term for that in there, but... Um, <laughs> Like John Deere and class, you got you got to push the whole thing forward. Yeah. Whereas this is like like the fence, I suppose. It comes back to the to the middle all the time. Would you handle a wider cut? I think it would. Yeah, we got a ten row on here. When we bought the five eighty, they only wanted to sell us with a with an eight row. Um, and initially we wanted a ten row Kemper because we were always Kemper header with a John Deere. Right, okay, yeah. But because it was a pre-production machine, Chrome said, well, you can have the machine, but you've got to have an easy collect header because we want to see how it goes with the machine. I'll tell you what, we wouldn't go back. I was impressed, too. Yeah, a lot, a lot better header. More personally. than the Kemper? Yeah, a lot. The Kemper that I had then, which was a eight row, the big four drums, um, it wouldn't handle short maze, it would block up on leaf and things like that. And this will take this, it. Set the old one, seven seasons, we never touched it. We had a we had a gearbox go, but that was our own fault. Bit of a that was my fault. We just didn't have time to go through it. We were just muck spreading and the maze started and all of a sudden you're you're three or four weeks yeah. into the maze and <laughs> just away. Yeah, and it just yeah, just um that's good header, handles if you have the maze go flat, it handles the maze flat on the floor. Um, so hopefully this will be the same again. We opted to have uh, Green Star on the machine or Isobus steering because we've got the domes on the tractors. Um, the maze header comes with a leaf a leaf guide, so we'll follow the rows, but chopping maze here where they've Missouri drilled it, or even 50 centimetre rows, we do quite a lot where it's drilled 50 centimetre rows. Sometimes the leaf feeler will get will struggle to find it, 
people to follow it. So we just put the green star on and, and go at an angle and you're happy days. Um, and we can set our centre coordinates over to the trailer boys and they can they can use it then to, to load the trailers. And yeah. Yeah. It's all about making it easier. Absolutely. We've got two Smith trailers here. Um, um, that Bailey that we've hired in for the season. Oh, you hired that in? Yeah, I hired that in. Yeah, we've got we're all Smith trailers. We've got four Smith trailers and a and an old sort of home built one. Um, they're good trailers. They tow well. They're stable. Um, yeah, I like them. They're quick. Single tipping rams on them. They're up and down and and out the door and gone. Um, this Bailey. I mean, they're good trailers, but they're not really what you want for running silage. They're, they're slow tipping. Um, they're quite hard to, to load, blowing over top of the cab because they're so high at the front. Right, well, Tim, thanks for letting us come out and no see problem. you guys today. It's no a problem. brilliant setup we've got here. Fair play, nice outfit. Uh, yeah, it's going really well for you. Yeah. Keep up, the, keep up the hard work, and uh, I'm sure we'll hopefully head out and see you when you're digging some beets. Yeah, 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 more than welcome. And have a look at that outfit as well. Yeah, no problem. Right, cheers for having us. We'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.